Hi guys, it's Taylor, and my presentation today is on Erinnerungskultur in German cinema. So what is Erinnerungskultur? It translates to cultural remembrance, and it came to be after World War II in relation to Germany's involvement in the war and in the Holocaust. And it came about after people were questioning collective identity. They didn't know what it meant to be German anymore, and they didn't really know what it meant to be German or Germany as a country moving forward with everything that happened. And also, it came from guilt, because people didn't know how to discuss their own involvement in the war, or their family's involvement, or even just Germany's involvement in general. And there was a question of, do you blame an individual, or do you blame society? And so, Erwin Rung's culture was created in an attempt to help these conversations happen and to be easier. Because people just didn't know how to have these conversations at all. And so, memorials were built to remember, and books were written. A lot of art came to be just because people thought it was important and that these conversations needed to happen because they did not want to forget. They didn't want it to let it be pushed to the side. It needed to be something that stayed in the forefront to prevent it from happening again. And one of the things that came to be was Arunarung's culture cinema. And two of the earliest films in Arunarung's culture cinema was Macro Muff and Not Reconciled. They are two short films that were designed to hold up a mirror to make people uncomfortable in recognizing problems that still existed in present Germany at that time. And it brought up problems within the military and in fascism in general. And it was kind of highlighting the fact that if you do not learn from your past, you are doomed to repeat it. And then in 1978, an American TV show called Holocaust was thought to be a really big turning point in Rinnerung's culture because it was one of the first films to show a Jewish family going through the Holocaust and how they dealt with it and what happened to them. But it was delivered in a way that was thought to be palatable. And so people were able to watch it and were able to discuss it and find more avenues to have conversations about what exactly happened. And then in 1989, the film Nasty Girl was another step forward because it really highlighted the necessity of having conversations because it follows a young girl or a young woman who's trying to write a port about her town's involvement in World War II. And She's blocked from all the reports and local dignitaries basically attack her and oust her from town. And the only way she is able to write her report is from the relationships she makes and the conversations she's able to have with people. And it essentially just highlights the fact that if you want your story to be told and remembered, you need to be able to tell it yourself. And just for reliance that people need to keep talking about it so that it doesn't get lost and things can't be swept under the rug. And so jumping ahead a bit into modern cinema, Arunarung culture is still very prevalent today. I read about several that came out this year, but these three that are here, The Pianist, The Boys in Striped Pajamas, and The Zookeeper's Wife, are all films that were award-winning and really well received by both the public and critics, and became really popular and helped even further conversation about World War II and what happened and what took place. So for my presentation, I wanted to specifically look at the 2008 film The Reader. It was a film based on a very popular Arena Rungs culture book by the same name, and it was incredibly popular in Germany. And so I watched the film and I'm going to talk a bit about how it relates to the Arena Rungs culture. So a summary of the film, it takes place in three stages. And the first stage develops the relationship between Michael, who is a young 15-year-old uh, German boy, and Hannah, who is a 36-year-old German woman. And they meet one summer and they have a whirlwind romance for the entire summer, where he will read to her, they'll sleep together, uh, they went on trips together, and it was Michael's first love, so it was his kind of defining moment in his youth, and it really shaped him throughout the rest of the film. And then one day he goes to see her, and she's just gone, all of her bags are packed, and she is left, and he has no idea where she went or why. And then the film jumps ahead a handful of years, and Michael is now in law school, starting to become a lawyer. And him and his classmates go to a trial for several female Nazi officials who were on trial for being responsible for 300 Jewish people dying in a fire. 
and one of the women on trial is Hannah. And in the trial, everything gets pinned on Hannah. The, the other officials blame everything on her, saying she was the leader, that she wrote all the reports. But Michael realizes partway through the trial that Hannah is illiterate and she has never told anybody, so it's not possible for her to have written the reports that are being pinned on her. And she ultimately ends up getting life in prison, while the other women are only given um, a handful of years. And then the film jumps again to many more years in the future. Hannah is nearing the end of her life, and she is being released back into society. Her prison sentence got shortened, and she was able to, supposed to have been leaving, and Michael is her only contact, so she, he is sent to go pick her up. And it follows him trying to still, after all these years, comprehend what she did and why she did it. But how it relates to the Arunarum's culture. The relationship. This relationship, strictly in connection to the Arunarum's culture, highlights the difficulty talking about when you have Nazi loved ones when learning about their involvement with the war. Because it is something very common in Germany where people don't know how to discuss their family's involvement. It's kind of taboo in a way. And when you do find out your family was involved or what exactly they did, it can be such a shock. And I think the film did a good job of showing the shock of having a loved one who was involved and learning out years later what exactly that entailed. And just the difficulty it can be to have those conversations, because Michael struggles for a very long time with how to discuss his relationship with Hannah. That struggle gets worse when he sees her on trial, because he doesn't know how to admit that he is in love with a woman who is partly responsible for the deaths of 300 people. I think it was a good parallel to other people and just not knowing how to discuss that, but knowing it needs to be discussed. The trial ended up bringing up the question of what is true justice? Um, there's various opinions in this. Hannah ends up getting blamed for everything and gets life in prison for having written these reports, which is not possible for her to have written. And Michael can't decide whether he should mention that she's illiterate, whether it's his responsibility, because he knows she'll get a lesser sentence if he does. But he can't figure out, does the fact that she's illiterate any way less than the fact that she was at least partly responsible for 300 deaths. Only two people survived the fire that killed the, all the others, and the middle picture is one of them, and she has commentary about the fact that she wants there to be some sort of price paid for all the lives lost, but she doesn't think that's possible, and that it's kind of just, if you believe in heaven or hell, it's going to be a something that gets solved in the afterlife that a person deserves to burn in hell. And there ends up being a conversation in Michael's class about what true justice is, because Michael is talking about, several of the students actually, not just Michael, are talking about how they are women and they are just following orders, but they are still responsible for these deaths. While another student says that all of the female officers deserve to be shot in the head, and if he had the chance, he'd do it himself, because that's the only sentence they deserve. And so it just brought up the question, what is true justice? And with these crimes that are really heinous, how can you really put a true value on it? And how do you make sure true justice is served when there's such varying opinions on what happened? And then the prison sequence, it brings up how do you find reconciliation or forgiveness? Because ultimately Hannah does die, or she kills herself before she can leave prison. And Michael ends up going to see Yana, who is the Jewish survivor. And he talks to her about Hannah, and Hannah left money for Yana to spend on whatever she wanted. And Yana's kind of mad that he came to see her. They have a brief discussion on what Michael's relationship was with Hannah, and he still can't talk about it much. And Yana says, like, if you're looking for forgiveness for her, I can't give it to her. I don't have that power because I don't forgive her for anything that happened to me or happened to the others. And she basically says that if you want to forgive her, you're going to have to do it yourself. And then at the end of the film, Michael finally goes to visits Hannah's grave with his daughter and finally talks about what happened and his guilt for hiding the fact that she was illiterate, but also their overarching relationship and the trauma it caused, but also her involvement in the war. 
and it really highlights the fact that forgiveness is something you have to grant yourself. You can't ask people to forgive others for you. It has to be something that's earned, something you come to terms with in your own way. And so for reception of the film. The general public actually really enjoyed this film. It was up for four Golden Globe nominations, including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Performance, and Best Screenplay. And the public received it really well on top of the critics. There was a few complaints that I read about Hannah's character, which I'll get into in a minute, but ultimately it was very positive and people enjoyed watching it. My opinion, I did enjoy the film. I think it's a good place for conversation. There's a lot going into it and I know I kind of breezed through a lot of that really quickly, but my biggest downfall of the film was Hannah's character, like others had pointed out in their reviews, was that Hannah never really gets a redemption arc of any sort. Or not even really a redemption arc, but she's just, they build her up as a character who sort of deserves pity because she is pinned for everything despite being illiterate. But she shows no remorse at any point in the movie. On trial, when she's asked about the people who were killed, she says that she was following orders and it was not her responsibility to open the door and potentially lose prisoners because as a soldier she would have gotten in trouble for that like it wasn't her responsibility so what was she expected to do and then even years later in prison when michael goes to see her before she's to be released he asks her if she's thought about what had happened and she thinks he means their relationship and he corrects her and says no about the people who died about what you did and her response is a very blunt, it doesn't matter what I think, they're dead, let them be dead. And she just never comes across as any way remorseful for the things that happened. And yes, there is the fact that she was following orders, but still, she never seems to regret these lives she lost. And that's my biggest flaw, is I feel like they were building her up for a character who deserves pity, but ultimately i feel like she doesn't besides that it was a good movie and it does help open up these conversations um these are my sources i know this is a long pre presentation and i apologize but i do hope you enjoyed it so thank you